Good morning. I'm Father Rob Slocum, priest in partnership with the Church of the Ascension Episcopal Church in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. And we're in the Slocum living room this morning to celebrate the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. And I'm thankful for the bulletin that we have to share. I want to thank my wife, Victoria, who will be assisting with the liturgy, and we will begin. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Psalm 99, we'll say it by half verse, breaking of the asters. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. Almighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O oh Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgives them, yet punish them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and will be forever. forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for I have found, you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, 
Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and you will proclaim and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, see, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 9. Surely it is God who saves me. I will, I will trust, trust in him, him and not be afraid. afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord. For he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from First Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we pro proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son to return from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Canticle 15. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For, for he has looked, looked with favor on his lowly servant. servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. 
So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 16. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come, come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. For homily today, I want to talk about hats. Hats, specifically different hats that we wear. So today I was just wandering around the house and finding some hats. These are hats that I've gotten from races that I've run. Here's one from uh, Waukesha, Wisconsin, run on a uh, trail that had been paved over. Uh, this was a memorial race here in Kentucky. Uh, another race we've done, uh, got the Hall of Fame. We did five in a row for that. Here's a, a pullover from the Pigskin Classic here, locally finished at the football field of a local high school. They kind of go on and on, a variety of hats. And I do this because if you think about it, we, all of us, wear a variety of hats in our lives, in our ministries, if you will. So you could say, well, I'm, I'm a priest. I, I work at University of Kentucky Healthcare uh, through the week. I'm a, a spouse. I'm Victoria's husband. I'm the father of Claire and Rebecca and Jacob. Uh, we're a variety of hats and a lot of recreational hats. I run, I do martial arts, and I'm not unique in that by any means. We, all of us, wear a variety of hats. And if you think about it, in the gospel story we just heard, in a sense, Jesus is inviting us to wear a variety of hats. And so when the people who are trying to trip him up by saying either one should or should not pay the tax to the emperor, you know, he says, well, render to Caesar that which is of Caesar. And he asked him to look at a coin, if you can imagine a big coin there, and say, like, whose image is on the coin? It's well, Caesar's image. So, well, render to Caesar what's of Caesar. Caesar's made the coin. Give it to him. But render to God what is of God, meaning you, meaning us, that we're made in the image and likeness of God. So it's sort of like wear the hat of a civilian, wear the hat of a citizen, but also remember to wear the hat of the kingdom of God. And that's really good advice. But just to say, as we live it out, we may find that all of these hats that we wear really integrate into the one life so that 
the way we live and the hats that we wear have everything to do with our faith, have everything to do with our identity as Christians, who we are. And we commit ourselves, you might say, that's the wholesale commitment to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to Jesus, our Redeemer, our Sanctifier, who raises us up, who gives us new life and new hope. But in retail, we live it out in terms of all the hats that we wear, the different ones that we're constantly taking off and putting on, the different hats that we wear. And those are our ministries. Those are our opportunities. And ministry is by no means just about people running around in funny white celluloid collars like mine here just pops right out. I'll pop it right back. Or black shirts or whatever. Ministry is what we do in Christ's name in the world and in the midst of other Christians and in the midst of all kinds of other people. So it doesn't just have to do with what we do on church on a Sunday morning or official ministries of the church that have been ordained. All of us are called, all of us are sent out into the world and what we do in the world matters. We pray that God's kingdom may be among us, that thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And that is all of our prayer and that's all of our commitment and all of our life. So not to imagine that the ministries that we do in the world are just little hats that pop on and off, but they integrate, they lead us to one great whole, which is the life we have in our Lord, in our maker. And that's individually, but it's also collectively. And so that is to say that the work of the church is not just the taking care of the church, although it's very important that we do so. The church is the body of Christ in the world and our church, which we love deeply, the Church of the Ascension. That's God's work in our place and in our lives. But we're called to constantly be reaching out. In other words, the church is not a club. I don't have anything against clubs. I really enjoy being a member of clubs. I can think of a, a running club that I was a member of years ago. We met every Saturday morning. We'd go out and we'd run along the lakefront. We'd come back and we'd have coffee or tea and muffin. And we'd visit and support each other. And it was great. But we were there really just for our group. We were there to encourage like-minded people. Hey, we all love running. We love getting together. We love that time. But the church is not just a club. The church is not just another hat that we wear. We're called to reach out in the world. Uh, Archbishop of Canterbury, William Temple, once said, the church is the one organization in the world that exists for the sake of those who aren't yet its members. And that's a reminder to us that we're constantly to be reaching out with open arms to the world around us, the broken, hurting, lonely, misunderstood, impoverished, confused, facing difficult circumstances, world that we live in, that's the world that we're called to minister to, to reach out to in its brokenness, in its imperfection, and in our imperfection, yet we reach out into the world in love. And as we do that, we remember what Jesus calls us to be about. In other words, we've got something to say in the wider world. We've got a witness to share. And Jesus, through his whole life, showed a, a preference for the poor. I mean, the Beatitudes, he, he, he preaches, you know, blessed are the poor, uh, blessed are the poor. Uh, we don't just step over weaker people's heads. We don't just ignore them. Indeed, I've heard it say that the true measure of a society is how it treats it's most vulnerable. It's most needy. The rich and powerful are going to get lots of deference just because of the way things seem to work. But God calls us to see the beauty in each life and to reach out in love to all kinds of people. The, the Magnificat that uh, Mary says when the angel announces to her the Annunciation that she will 
bear the Messiah when she consents. And in that prayer, it's a reminder of what is to happen in the life of the Messiah and in those who follow the Messiah, the, including the, the humble and poor raised up, the, the arrogant and superior seeming brought down. So in this world, we have a witness of faith. In this world, we have many ministries. Uh, there are a variety of ministers, a variety of ministries, but one Lord. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. But we have different contributions that we can make as the body of Christ. And isn't that true for anybody I know? I mean, just like uh, they say, well, a thumb's a really useful thing. As human beings, we have opposable thumbs. It opens up all kinds of possibilities. But you don't want your body to be all thumbs. That would be clumsy. So our diversity enriches us. The varieties of ministries that we offer. We are differently abled, if you will. We have different abilities, different contributions to offer, different hats that we can wear. But we do it for the glory of God. We do it to make his love known in the world to all kinds of people in all kinds of places. And the church as church is called to have something to say and something to offer in the best of times and in the worst of times. And we can do it. We can do it as we take up our hats and wear them. We can do it as we follow our Lord. Our service continues with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Lord Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his, his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your weight be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad of the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty and ever-living God, source of our wisdom and understanding, be present with us as we consider the renewal and mission of our church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us by your Holy Spirit to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people are for three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern, hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I ask your prayers for those who have gone before us. Mary Hutter Spear. We celebrate the birthday of Anna Melendez. We ask special prayers for Walker, Yancey, Julia, April, Betty, Jim, Norm, Mabel, Virginia, Ryan, Pat, DeFord, Faye, Cindy, Suzanne, Patty, Sue, Bonnie, Michael, Kenny, Judy, Shirley, Dwight, Gail, Kathy, Susanna, Lee, Heather, Teresa, Thelma, Gina, Corbin, Jessica, Patrick, Dana, Lisa, Robin, Bill, and Brenda, Josh, Anna, Christy, Lance, Ron, Steve, Danny, Beverly, Luke, Abby, Cynthia, Brenda, Diane, Anthony, James, Barbara, Kathy, Lucas, Sebastian, Sandy, the Brown family, Jocelyn, Julie, Jeff, Sally, Thelma, and Chuck, as well as all those who suffer. We remember those in the armed services, both at home and abroad, and all who have suffered as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray especially for healthcare workers, physicians, nurses, first responders, law enforcement, all those on the front lines of society, keeping us going in a time of great danger. I ask your prayers for those on our Dawson Intercessory Prayer List, St. Mark's Church Hazard. Oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let me remind you to join us for Christian education today at 10.30 and coffee hour at 11, both live on Zoom.